High in the hills of the island of Sodor, hidden deep in the Hawindui Valley, runs a little railway. A little narrow gauge railway. A charming little narrow gauge railway. With a heart of gold, one might say. The charming little railway runs around a lake in the woods and past a beautiful waterfall. It is run by a fleet of charming little steam engines. One of these little engines is named Scarlowy. And today, I'm going to tell you his story. Scarlowy is the oldest working engine on the island of Sodor. He is an astounding 157 years old, and still kicking strong. Scarlowy is a kind, wise old sage, and incredibly faithful. Once impatient, reckless, and full of his own ideas in his youth, Scarlowy is now a very respected, firm, and fair engine. Although he may still be reckless and childish, depending on what episode you watch. Scarlowy has an unbreakable spirit, and utmost respect for the passengers that visit his little railway. Everything he does, he does for them. He works alongside Reneus, who he has worked with for so long that he is basically a brother to him. He also has a real-life twin called Tallyclin, who you can go and see for yourself in person in Wales. Scarlowy is the heart of Wilbert Audrey's railway series, and a cherished favorite among Thomas fans. And today we're going to take a deep dive on just what Scarlowy is really all about. As always, we'll start from the very beginning. It is absolutely impossible to talk about Scarlowy's origins without talking about the real-life counterpart, the Tally Clin Railway in Wales. So I'm going to give you all a brief history on the railway first before we begin. The 1830s. In the north of Wales, slate mining had become a booming industry. By the 1840s, a large slate mine called Bryn Eglois was in full operation. A railway was constructed in 1864 to transport the slate from the mines to Tawin, and from there to the harbor and beyond. The railway was called the Tallyclin Railway, and commissioned two steam engines from Fletcher Jennings Works in Whitehaven. The first engine was named Tally Clinn, after the railway, and the second was called Dalgok. For many, many years, these two ran the railway alone. By the 1940s, Tally Clinn had put in a good 70 odd years of service and was worn out. The engine was placed in an open shed while Dalgok ran the struggling railway. By 1950, it was very clear Dalgok was on her last legs, and the railway's fate was nearing. Steam enthusiasts found the little railway fascinating. The fact it was still operating as its own company while every other railway was now under BR ownership, and with the same two engines it had from day one, made it incredibly unique. Steam enthusiast Tom Rolt formed the Tallyclin Preservation Society and led the attempt to preserve it. Efforts were complex, but successful, and in February 1951, it was complete. The Tallyclin Railway became the first officially preserved railway in the world. The first public train under preservation ownership ran on May 14th. Its two old engines were overhauled while two new ones were purchased to help keep the railway running. The 50s was a very experimental time for the Tallyclin, as people fascinated by this little line soon came in swoons to volunteer. The idea of a steam railway operating solely by volunteers was novel at the time. The trains simply ran because people wanted them to. A one Reverend Wilbert Audrey heard about the Tallyclin after the first meeting of the Preservation Society and promptly joined. He visited on holiday in 1952 with his family and began volunteering as a guard, 
plate layer and booking clerk. Audrey was so inspired by this charming little railway and these locomotives that he wanted to write about them in his railway series books. In 1955, the 10th book called Four Little Engines was published. The book featured a fictional narrow gauge railway on the island of Sodor that was run by two little engines who became worn out and two others came there to help them. It should be noted that all the stories of this book were completely inspired by actual real life events on the Tally Clin. Rails being so old and worn that engines fell between them, the refreshment lady being left behind when the guard blew his whistle too early, who was Audrey himself, I should mention, and the railway's oldest engine left in an open shed when he became too worn out to be useful. That little engine's name was Scar Lowy. This is his story. In 1863, a new narrow gauge railway was constructed on the island of Sodor to transport copper, and later slate, from a mine in the Wardfell Mountain down to a standard gauge transfer point at Crobin's Gate. The railway ran up the valley and terminated at the lake of Scarlowy, and was thus named the Scarlowy Railway. The railway required steam engines, and two were commissioned from Fletcher Jennings Works in England. The first engine was built in 1864, and was the railway's namesake, Scarlowy. Scarlowy was built alongside his twin, Tally Clinn. When they were both complete, Tally Clinn went off to the Tally Clinn Railway in Wales, while Scarlowy was sent to a harbor bound for the island of Sodor. At this time, there was no bridge connection between Sodor and the mainland, so Scarlowy had to be sent to the island by ship. <laughs> In 1865, Scarlowy arrived at Kirk Ronan Harbor aboard the P.S. Cumberland Road. The harbor had no cranes, so he was lifted off using the ship's derricks. Scarlowy was loaded onto a flatbed and transported to his new home by a Sodor and Mainland Railway engine called Neil. So you're bound for the wee railway. Ye must put some order into those trucks. Behave as they make it hard to believe. What? When Scarlowy arrived, he found the work he was designated to do unfit for a brand new engine like him. He wanted to pull passengers, not dirty wagons. The workers there were new to steam engines and couldn't figure out how to get them to work right. Scarlowy refused to cooperate, and eventually the manager, Mr. Mack, became fed up. He sheeted Scarlowy up until further notice. He was eventually unsheeted after he apologized and was put to work. In September, the second engine, Reneus, arrived, and the two did not get along. Scarlowy was bouncy and impatient, while Reneus was the more sensible of the two. After an incident with Mr. Mack falling off the footplate when Scarlowy bounced about too much, it was decided he'd be rebuilt with a set of trailing wheels to steady him. Two years later, Scarlowy returned back to the railway a very different looking engine. He now had a set of rear trailing wheels and a cab which was a new thing for engines at the time. He was quite the sight and received a lot of attention from passengers and workers abound. Even the snooty coaches were impressed by him. This made him more big-headed than ever, and he and Reneus would quarrel constantly. You should get one like me and be up to date. No, thank you. You look like a snail with that house on your back. So much so that the men had to park them in the shed back to back so that they wouldn't fight at night. When the rain came, Scarlowy was used more often than Reneus because his cab would keep the crews dry. He got stuck in a mudslide one day, and Reneus was forced to come rescue him. Scarlowy looked ridiculous covered in mud. So ridiculous that Reneus couldn't help but laugh. The laugh was contagious, and Scarlowy laughed too. They laughed so much the men thought the poor engines had gone mad. And from that day on, Scarlowy and Reneus became good friends brothers, one might say, and they worked together on their little railway for many, many years after that. As the engines grew older, they both learned sense. Scarlowy became a much more mature engine, and gained a respect for the passengers that paid to ride their little line. As was just recently revealed to the public, Audrey wrote in his notes the fate of the nearby Sodor and Mainland Railway. The railway fell into hard times and needed funds. Neil, the engine that unloaded Scarlowy, was sold off to the Crovens Gate Mining Company and would transport the slate Scarlowy would bring down to him to the harbor at Kirk Ronan. 
When Neil was away for repairs, Scarloey would step in and be loaded onto a special gauge converter wagon to run on standard gauge tracks. He would haul the standard gauge wagons to the harbor, which for a little narrow gauge engine was a long distance and a significantly heavier load. This frequent overuse eventually wore Scarloey out. By the 1940s, Scarloey was in such bad shape that he couldn't be used anymore and was put aside to be steamed only in emergencies. He was retired to an open shed at Croven's Gate, while Reneas ran the railway all by himself for the foreseeable future. It's my turn now, he said. You've done more than your share of hard work. Both engines at this time were over 70 years old. Reneas ran the line for a good eight years or so on his own, but eventually kicked the bucket when he broke down en route. The railway had fortunately arranged for two new engines, and when Sir Handel and Peter Sam arrived, Reneas was sent away to be overhauled. Scarloey, however, stayed in his shed. That is, until one fateful day when Sir Handel derailed and an engine was needed pronto to pull the market day train. Scarloey volunteered, and with no other options, the manager agreed. Scarloey steamed for the first time in about nine years. His condition was poor, and the crew feared the entire time his boiler might explode. On the journey back down, Scarloey broke a spring, and although the crew were ready to throw in the towel and phone for a bus, Scarloey wasn't a quitter. Leaking steam in all directions and leaning to one side, Scarloey crawled the train home. Say it with me now, what a Chad. The crew were so pleased with him they dubbed him Old Faithful and promised to send him away to be fully overhauled. Scarloey was sent back to England, where he reunited with his twin, Tally Clinn, the first time the two twins had seen each other in many, many years. In 1958, Scarloey returned home from England feeling like a new engine, and went back into regular service on the railway's roster. And he still is, to this very day. In 1965, Scarloey's 100th birthday was celebrated. In 2021, Scarloey is 157 years old as is his real-life counterpart, Tally Klim. He is THE oldest working engine on the island of Sodor, which is a huge honor to hold, and one he'll hold for the rest of time. Scarloe may not be real, but Tally Klim is, and the fact she is still alive and steaming today is a testament to the passion and dedication of railway volunteers everywhere. The Tally Klim and the Scarloe go hand in hand, if it weren't for the charm of the Tally Klin, Audrey would never have written stories about Scarloey. And if it weren't for Scarloey's large reach, the Tally Klin would not be as much of a crowd drawer as it is today. Not too shabby, considering one of these two railways isn't even real. Now that we know the history, let's get into his character. I'm just gonna say it. Scarloey is the most developed character in the whole railway series. Characters like Gordon and Edward and Henry are all super developed too, especially Gordon, as we followed his whole character journey from start to end. But Scarlow is a bit different from Gordon because he has the advantage of being a lot older, with several more gaps of time to fill stories into. Scarlow's life started in an entirely different century, the mid-1800s, in a totally different time period to now. We saw all different sides of the character through different periods. When Scarloey was young and new, he was impatient, hot-headed, and never listened to reason. He was very rambunctious and eager to get out in the world. And when Reneus would try to bring him back down to Earth, he'd snap at him and the two would argue. When Mr. Mack tried to get him to pull trucks, he didn't cooperate. When he got his new cab, he was super boastful. Very unlike the Scarloey we know and love now, but not out of the ordinary for a young engine. As time went on, Scarloey realized the value of hard work and grew up. For 70-something years, only he and Reneus ran the whole railway by themselves. He very quickly understood just how important passengers were to the survival of their railway. Passengers are our coal and water, he would say. No passengers means no trains. No trains means no railway. We saw that firsthand in Old Faithful when he risked everything to get his train home, despite all the odds against him. He also reprimands the coaches for possibly hurting the passengers in the same story. We also see this reassured in Gallant Old Engine, when Scarloey lashes out at Duncan for stranding his passengers on the viaduct. And he lashed out at Rusty in Rock and Roll for not wanting to help a derailed passenger train. Despite this, Scarloey isn't always serious all the time either. 
On many occasions, we've seen the jokey side of him. He is not above making fun of the other engines when they deserve a little humility. He was the one that ignited the whole Sir Handel and George conflict, after all. And he did that just because he thought it'd be funny. And, well, he wasn't wrong. Scarlowy may be an old geezer now, but he's young at heart. Scarlowy's brotherly bond with Reneus is worth bringing up, too. These two hated each other when they first met, but we saw them find common ground as time went on. They grew and became brothers over time, like real people. There's such a wholesomeness in how much these two have each other's backs. The two quickly realized that only as a team together would their little railway prosper. And that dedication never died out, as we saw each perform in their respective hero stories. In Old Faithful and Gallant Old Engine, both Scarloe and Reneus were put in very similar situations. Both were worn out and broke down en route. But they pressed on and got their trains home. Both were heroes. Very similar stories. However, there is a key difference between the two. In Reneus's case, if Reneus didn't get the train home, there was an underlying fear that the railway would close. If I fail, the railway will close. I'll get there or burst. It was a make it or break it situation, and thus Reneus was more of a hero for it. In Scarloe's case, the situation wasn't as dire. He broke down at a station. The crew even said they could just phone a bus for the passengers. But Scarloe refused and got his train home anyway. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to put himself at such risk, but he did it anyway for his passengers. The key difference here is that Reneus did it because he had to. Scarloe did it because he wanted to. I think that speaks volumes about Scarloe's character and where his morals lie. Quite a glow up from the reckless engine he once was when he was younger, huh? Scarloe started out as a typical young character and grew into a wise, confident, moral, and well-respected figurehead. One of the best character journeys of the series, if I'm honest. I don't think Scarloe's journey strikes as impressive as, say, Gordon's, because it was told to us out of order. We got the hero story first, then lots of present day stuff, and then the backstory way later. But when you look at it all in order, wow is it quite the glow up. Quite a lot of punch this little faithful engine packs, huh? You know what they say, never overlook a little engine. Scarlow's portrayal in the model era of the TV show is interesting, to say the least, because it's basically the railway series arc, but backwards. Literally reversed. Let me explain. Like all the other narrow gauge engines, Scarlow's first appearance wasn't until season four. His first stories were very much like the railway series ones, and followed them pretty faithfully. Scarlow and Reneus worked the railway together for many years, but eventually grew old and tired. Scarloe became worn out, and was retired to an open shed where he could see everything. Reneus ran the railway alone, until he finally broke down too. The railway received two new engines called Peter Sam and Sir Handel, and Reneus went away to be mended. Peter Sam and Sir Handel ran everything by themselves while Scarloe rested. That is, until Sir Handel derailed and another engine was needed to haul his train. Scarloe stepped up to the occasion, and we know how the story goes. He broke down as well, but he got the train home anyway. The crew were so pleased with him that they sent him away to be fully overhauled. Old engines can't pull trains like the young ones can. They can if they're mended, Old Faithful, smiled his driver. And that's what's going to happen to you. You deserve it. And he returned home sometime after, feeling like a new engine. Unfortunately, the stories of Scarloe and Reneus' early days were never adapted for TV so we never got to see how those would have played out or what they would have changed. One thing I think is also worth noting is the Tally Clinton connection is not present in the TV show. Scarlowe pretty often talked about his little old twin in the books, which, of course, we know Audrey did to advertise the real railway to his readers, but it's never a thing in the show. I don't know why, but Britt Allcroft had a weird thing about never name-dropping real engines. City of Truro appeared, but was never named or spoke. Flying Scotsman was never named or fully seen, and Tally Clinn was never mentioned. Stepney's the only real engine that did appear, 
but his story was changed so much that he might as well have been an original character. As the model seasons went on, Skarloey would show up fairly regularly with the other narrow gauge engines. In Season 5, we learned of a time when Skarloey braved an avalanche and was buried in snow. In the same season, he faced off with a giant boulder and told off George when he was belittling the engines. There's also this little line that I really like. If we don't go now, Skarloey will take my favorite place in the sheds. Which kind of implies that Skarloey would purposely take Duncan's shed spot just to anger him. Skarloey was kind of a little badass this season. Have I ever told you guys how much I love Season 5? Season 6 was when the changes started happening. Nothing too major yet, but the signs were there. The episode Rusty Saves the Day depicted the Skarloey Railway in such a state of disrepair that the Fat Controller actually considered closing it. Like, the whole railway. I don't know what they meant by this. This was... a strange episode. During the engine's attempt to mend the line, Skarloey was the first one to want to give up. She's right, he said. We'll never get it done in two weeks. Okay, that's a little weird of Skarloey of all characters to say. It's only the railway he lived on his entire life, and very quickly he's ready to throw in the towel. This was his only major appearance worth noting this season, so nothing too alarming yet, but something didn't feel right. Then we come to Season 7, and oh man, this is where the degradation really started. The infamous episode, The Old Bridge, is the one most people pinpoint as the start of Skarloey's decline, and I have to agree there. Skarloey becomes afraid to cross an old trestle bridge after nearly falling off of it, despite it being fully repaired. This episode was the first Thomas episode ever, in my opinion, to just feel completely wrong. It's not the first bad episode per se, but it's the first one that I feel completely misunderstood the characters. The first episode that wrote well-established characters completely untrue of what they're supposed to be. I can sympathize a bit with Skarloey in this. I mean, he did nearly fall off that bridge. I can understand why he'd be a little on edge. See, see what I did there? On edge, get it? But he's a grown ass man, the oldest engine on Sodor. And to see him just give up and be so cowardly was so untrue to the character. I'll give the episode this though. I do like that Skarloey puts his fear aside immediately when he hears Reneas is in trouble. Their brotherly bond is still very much a thing here but at the cost of an incredibly weak episode. I always thought this was a story that would have worked very well if it took place back in Skarloey's younger days before the other engines arrived, before he and Reneas grew up. I like to think that it is, but Duncan and modern day Sir Topham Hatt appear, so this was clearly not the show's intention. This, very unfortunately, was not a one-off fluke. This episode basically solidified the new status quo for Skarloey. And oh my god, it just got worse as the seasons went on. They turned Skarloey into a child in the seasons after this. Skarloey being scared of something is the plot of most of his spotlight episodes. In season 10, he's afraid of going to the wharf. He cowers when someone makes fun of him. In season 11, he's afraid of thunder and lightning. So scared that he hides and refuses to work. But then when he's not depicted as scared, he's depicted as a reckless imbecile. He goes up the incline to show the world just how brave he is, and then breaks it. He races Reneas at dangerous speeds, which causes Reneas to derail. Pretty horrifically, I should mention. He bumps trucks so hard that he demolishes them. He joins Thomas in scaring others with his whistle, causing colossal damage everywhere. He plays tug of war, hauling a puppet show train. Oh my god, this might be the worst episode of the show. I can't stand this one. The only time in the later part of this era that Skarloey feels like Skarloey, that I can recall anyway, is the season 9 episode, The Magic Lamp, where Skarloey is the one that tells the others about the legend of Proteus. This felt very Skarloey to me. He's an older engine that would of course know old legends of the railway. Was this a fluke? Like, why did they use Skarloey correctly like this, this one time, when every other episode around this one depicts him like this? Puff Skarloey as he raced down the hill. Skarloey aged backwards in the model era. His first stories depicted him as an older, kinder, wise, responsible, passionate engine, 
and his last ones depict him as an idiot child that talks like this. I'm a scary little engine, and scary engines will never be useful engines. Ugh, why did they do this? What was the thought process here? How did this happen? Scarlowey wasn't the only one to suffer these changes. Basically, all the narrow gauge engines regressed. Reneus too became a reckless child. Rusty became very irresponsible. And Sir Handel, for some reason, became the old wise sage character that talked like Marlon Brandau. I am going to tell him a man in the hills story. They are his favorites. What? It's just so baffling. I, honest to God, think the intention of the writers was, the narrow gauge engines are physically little, so they're like baby trains. So we'll write them as children, with a complete disregard on how they were written in previous seasons. I really have nothing more to say here other than it's disappointing. I love Scarloe in seasons 4 and 5. He's perfect in those seasons. He's depicted as older and wiser, but his jokey side, his brave side, and those leader sides of his persona are all totally intact. Season 7 or so onwards, I really can't stand him. This just isn't Scarloe. He might as well have been a totally different character. I'm very happy to say the CGI seasons did not continue this character regression. However, there isn't really a whole lot to say. When the CGI era started, the narrow gauge engines were absent for a while. A good few seasons went by where they just didn't appear at all. I think they were mentioned once. The little engines in the hills tell me stories all the time. But that was it. The movie Blue Mountain Mystery changed that. I recently talked about this movie in my movie rankings video praising it for what it did. And man, did it do a lot. This was the narrow gauge engine's big return to the series, with an all new look and voices of their very own. This big comeback really was something to celebrate. Such an effort was made to tie these characters back to their Tally Quinn roots. The animation company Nitrogen actually flew out to Wales and got photos of everything for reference. Much of the rolling stock was accurately recreated in CGI, and lots of little details from the real-life engines were applied to the characters. This humongous effort put in to mark the narrow gauge engine's big return was really apparent. Scarlowey, of course, made his big return in this, and I am so, so happy to tell you that there was a very clear effort to revert him back to what he once was. The childish, frightened, idiotic character Scarlowey regressed into was not present here at all. He went back to being written as a confident, wise, responsible leader character, complete with a deep man voice to emphasize that. Always. If your wheels aren't whirring, you aren't being a really useful engine. I feel like they intentionally went with a deep voice for him as a way of saying to fans, don't worry, we are never ever going back to the childish persona. His friendship with Reneus was retained, as was that jokey side of his personality. You have to stop bumping into things, Reneus. <laughs> he was also depicted as very serious, which I really enjoyed. Scarlowey is the one that makes it very clear to Thomas that the whole Luke situation was dire, and he's the one that exploded at Thomas when Thomas blurted out he leaked the secret. While there were a few episodes that starred them after this, the narrow gauge engines were all reduced to a sort of group appearance kind of thing, where you wouldn't get an episode about one of them, or with just one of them. If one narrow gauge engine appeared, then a good chunk of them would too. It was very rare we'd see one separate from the rest in an episode. I want to talk about the Blue Mountain Quarry here for a second. There was a clear restructure of how the narrow gauge engines would be used when they brought them into the CGI series. No longer would they really get episodes on their railway, instead they were all basically stuck in this giant Penryn inspired industrial quarry. The CGI series liked to section off certain areas where characters work, and I think this was done mostly for marketing reasons. It's easier for kids to remember a location if there is a specific character tied to it. Very rarely would you see Salty outside of Brendam Docks, Victor outside the Steamworks, and the narrow gauge engines outside the Blue Mountain Quarry. This wasn't strictly the rule, of course, as we did get a couple Duncan-focused episodes on the railway, but I feel like those were the exception to the rule. The Blue Mountain Quarry became THE place the narrow gauge engines primarily worked in these seasons, with Scarlowey as the face of them. 
Scarlo's role in all of this was definitely the main one. He became the face of the Narrow Gauge Clan whenever they decided to use them. Whenever a character went to the Blue Mountain Quarry, Scarlowy was usually the one to talk and to greet them. Hello there, Paxton! Hello, Billy! Hello, Paxton! Why is Sydney here with you? If any Narrow Gauge engine were to get a line in, it was usually him. I feel like this was the sort of kiss of death for these characters, unfortunately. As these seasons went on, the Narrow Gauge engines appeared less and less with every season. Mattel sort of deemed them as unmarketable and basically shied away from allowing them ample screen time. They did manage to appear at least once a season though, even in the Boba era, and Scarloe always got a line snuck in. I find Scarloe in the CGI series to be kind of bittersweet. They absolutely fixed him and made him a much better character than previously, and they were very consistent with him. Every time he did appear, it was a joy but they never used him to his full potential because of how reduced the Narrow Gauge Engine's roles were in the show at this time. We never got a CGI Scarlowy Spotlight episode, but at least they fixed him. That's something to be grateful for. I think it's pretty safe to say that Scarlowy and the Narrow Gauge Engines will not be appearing in the show anytime in the foreseeable future, but maybe that's a good thing. They managed to leave the series on a pretty good note, untarnished. Scarlowy's journey in the show, like many characters, has been a turbulent one. But unlike some, I can say that despite going off the rails in the middle there, he did re-rail himself again, and ended his tenure on a pretty good note. The Scarlowy we last saw felt like the real Scarlowy, and that's something to be grateful for. When it comes down to choosing the best of the three different eras, I think the choice here is pretty obvious. Definitely Railway Series. There is just so much history in Scarlowy's railway series journey, he had such a fantastic character arc. From his early days all the way to his old geezer years, we experienced the whole thing. His ties with the real-life Tally Clint is also something that's very strong in the books, which is something that all rail enthusiasts can appreciate. If it weren't for Scarlowy, the Tally Clint would not be as so much a draw to modern audiences as it is today. It'd still be popular for being the first ever preserved steam railway, no doubt, but that connection to Scarlowy does it wonders. So many younger people from all over the world make that pilgrimage to this little railway just to volunteer and help out, all because they read or watched the Scarlowy stories as kids. And I think that is just beautiful. Scarlowy is the heart and soul of Audrey's Railway series and is definitely one of the most important characters in it. I want to give a special shout out to Luke Ryan once again for his help on this video, fact checking my script and making sure all the information I presented here was totally correct, especially the pronunciations of some of those difficult Welsh words. Thanks again, Luke. Luke overlooks the Reverend Audrey study at the Tallyclin Railway in Wales and runs the official Tallyclin Railway YouTube channel. I highly recommend subscribing to it. A new video is uploaded every week. He pretty often posts interesting facts and tidbits from Audrey's notes none of us knew before. Only very recently did he reveal Audrey's notes about Scarlowy's transporter wagon, and that Neil actually survived a lot later than we thought. They also post live streams of the engines running, editorial videos on engines histories, and footage of Audrey's own model layout at work. Link to the Talaclin channel is in the description. I also want to give a shout out to the Tallyclin Railway itself, one of the friendliest and charming heritage railways out there. The real life Scarlowy, Tallyclin, is currently under overhaul, slated to return to steam next year. If you wish to donate to the railway to speed the overhaul along, or just want to show your support to the railway, I provided a link below on where you can do that. Every cent counts. Thanks again everyone, as always, for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.